Um, first, we are uh, welcome uh, Dr. Professor Adam uh, for joining us and hope uh, that he is enjoying uh, and we will enjoy his, his time with us. And uh, I'm very honored today for introducing uh, him and moderating his interest session and topic. Uh, and I want to know, uh, I want you to know, uh, Professor Adam, that many researchers and the students uh, are waiting for this topic to can benefit from your experience in this field. Uh, and uh, on behalf of the, our research group, I am uh, welcoming you and uh, showing our appreciation for accepting the invitation for being with us in the third day in the first Arabic Online Science Week. And uh, let me first just open the session in uh, Arabic. Uh, then we'll continue the session in English and I will translate to you any questions or the discussions that will uh, in, the, in the end of the sessions. Okay. Thanks a lot, Professor Adam. Uh, وفي اليوم الثالث للأسبوع العربي الأول للعلوم اليوم الثالث ومعاكم دكتورة سالي الغمراوي عضو في المدرسة البحثية المصرية رئيس قسم هندسة الحاسبات بأكاديمية مصر النهاردة إن شاء الله هكون المودريتر للمحاضرة في الأولى لليوم الثالث في, في الأسبوع العلمي العربي طبعا احنا بندين بال... بال... بكل الفضل والشكر الاستاذ دكتور ابو العلا ان هو ادانا الفكرة دي او قدم لنا الفكرة دي ان هي تخدم الشباب والباحثين العرب كلهم والواحد بيتمنى فعلا ان يكون الاسبوع بدأ يحقق اهدافه وان فعلا بدأ يبقى فيه الباحثين العرب بدأوا يكسبوا خبرات ومهارات بحثية في اهم الموضوعات على مستوى العالم والنهاردة معنا عالم كبير دكتور آدم من الناس اللي هتفيدنا جدا في الجزء الخاص بالإفالوريشنري ألغوريزمز هيتكلم عليها النهاردة ودي نبزة صغيرة عن بروفيسور آدم هو IEEE Senior Member هو رئيس قسم هندسة الحاسبات في كوزالين يونيفرستي من بولندا واخد الماجستير والماستر والماستر والبي اتش دي من نفس القسم في الجامعة وواخد دكتور هابل ديجري في الانتليجنس سيستمز من قسم ميكانيكا هو اسوشيت بروفيسور في قسم الكترونكس والكمبيوتر في نفس الجامعة اللي هي الكوزالين يونيفرستي دكتور سلاويك طبعا هو ريفيور وأوسر لعدد أكتر من ميت من جيل من ميت بحث في أكتر من مجلة وهو أسوشيتد إدتور في آي تريبل إي ترانسكشن إن إندستريال إنفورماتيكس وواخد أكتر من جائزة بيست بيبر وورد في الآي تريبل إي كونفرنس وهو جست جست إديتور في أكتر من سبيشيال إيشو جوا الآي تريبل إي ترانزاكشنز مختلفة زي الفازي سيستم أو الاندستريال إنفورماتيكس ترانزاكشن فإحنا نحاول على قد ما نقدر نستفيد ونجمع أسئلة ون... لأن هو, هو قبل دعوة دكتور أبو العيلة إن هو يفيد الناس فإحنا على قد ما هنقدر هنبدأ نركز هو الجزء الأساسي اللي هو بيتكلم فيه علشان في ناس كتير ال... ال... تسأل هو هيتكلم في أنه جزء بالضبط طبعاً الـ Artificial Intelligence زي ما احنا عارفين أن هي ممكن تيجي في أي من أكتر من شكل دي إحدى طرق الـ Artificial Intelligence اللي هتبقى مستوحاة من التطور الطبيعي أو من الطبيعة والكائنات الحية وبتستخدم في مشاكل كتير صعب أن أنت تحلها بس تبقى سهل أن أنت تقيم أداء وهيتكلم معانا في أكتر من تطبيق زي يعني اللي ممكن يقدمه زي الهيلث كير سوشيال ميديا هنتكلم بقى معاه ونسأله في التفاصيل بتاعي بروفيسور آدم the session will start uh, now and will end at uh, 12.45 and we okay. have 15 minutes for questions okay okay you, uh, you can share your screen uh, no uh, uh, I must stop share your screen okay 
And now, okay, yes, uh, now I can share my screen. Uh, now you should see uh, my presentation. It is shown, Doctor, it is shown. Yes? Yes, it's shown. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sally, for a kind uh, introduction of my person. Thank you. Uh, I would like uh, also thank to Professor uh, Hassanini for his uh, kind invitation to this event. And uh, hello uh, everyone uh, online. Uh, okay, um, so um, I would like to start a presentation uh, which uh, title is uh, Evolutionary Algorithms. Uh, my name is uh, Adam Słowik. I am from Koszalin University of uh, Technology. Uh, Poland. My presentation, uh, which uh, consists uh, with the following uh, steps, uh, I will present a short introduction to the evolutionary algorithms. Next, I will present a taxonomy of evolutionary algorithms. And um, I uh, give a short uh, description how evolutionary algorithms work. In the next step, I present a modification of evolutionary algorithms. Uh, we will discuss some about popularity of evolutionary algorithms. And uh, we will look uh, how much publications in the Web of Science uh, database is related to the field of uh, evolutionary uh, computing. Uh, also, uh, I will present uh, how much patents uh, are stored in Google patents uh, database uh, where uh, evolutionary algorithms uh, was, uh, were used. Uh, I also present the most popular areas of uh, applications uh, of evolutionary algorithms. Uh, we, uh, I also will try to answer to the question uh, which evolutionary algorithm should be used uh, for a given problem. Uh, we will discuss, of course, two main problems uh, which occur in evolutionary algorithms. We will discuss about future trends uh, in evolutionary computing. And at the end of my presentation, uh, we will discuss uh, about a uh, very short uh, summary. Okay, uh, so now uh, introduction to evolutionary algorithms. First of all, uh, we should uh, give a question, what are um, evolutionary algorithms? The answer uh, is as follows. Evolutionary algorithms are a nature-inspired global optimization techniques. So where evolutionary algorithms are used? Evolutionary algorithms are used general for solving complex and hard optimization problems where traditional methods are not effective. So, uh, if we have an exact method uh, where we can obtain the best solution in acceptable time, then application of evolutionary algorithm is not recommended. But if we have a complex problem, complex hard optimization problems, where do, uh, where do not exist exact algorithm, or where computational time is very, very long, and we do not have a guarantee that we found, that we find the best solution, then applications of then application of evolutionary algorithm is strong recommended what are a complex and hard optimization problems in general the complex problem uh, or hard optimization problem is a problem where solution space is huge and the computational time for finding the optimal solution is not acceptable for us. When 
solution space is huge and computational time for finding the optimal solution using standard methods is not acceptable for us, then we can use a one of the technique from evolutionary algorithms family. Where the solution space is huge. Hmm. In every problem where its dimensionality is huge. If the dimension of the search space is huge, then probably solution space is also, is also huge. But where computational time for finding optimal solution is very long. In general, we have three cases. First, uh, if we have a solution space uh, which consists of many, many uh, potential solutions, then probably uh, computational time uh, will be very long. Second, if the objective function if, is complex and the time consuming in computation, also probably the computational uh, time will be very long. And of course, if we have a mixed these two variants, these both variants, so uh, when uh, the solution space is huge and the computation of objective function is time consuming, then probably computational time will be very long. Now, uh, please uh, look at the example. Uh, in many engineering problems, uh, we can, uh, many engineering problems can be modeled uh, with the use of traveling salesman problem. Uh, traveling salesman problem is well known, uh, I suppose, um, especially uh, in the domain of vehicle routing problems. Now I would uh, like only in short present what is a traveling salesman problem, uh, TSP in short. Uh, let's assume that we have a 10 cities. Uh, 10 cities is uh, located in this area. Uh, we start from the one city. We must visit each of this city and the constraint is that one city can be visited only one time by us. And the main goal of our optimization method is to find a such a travel, a such a road, which will be have the minimal value of length. So in TSP problem, each city can be visited only one time, and we can try to minimize the length of our travel. So here is 10 cities. In this uh, second figure, we can see all roads. And here is an initial solution. In this initial solution, the length of our travel is equal uh, around 900 of kilometers, for example. If we do some generations of evolutionary algorithms, we can find the following solution. The following solution possesses uh, 700 kilometers. The, the travel length is equal to 700 kilometers. If we do next uh, several uh, steps, we obtain, for example, such a solution with uh, around 700 kilometers. Next uh, generations, in next generations, we have obtained the solutions uh, which will be have uh, travel, length of the travel equal to uh, 664 kilometers and so on. So, of course, in this last case, 
when the uh, our travel is uh, equal to uh, 664 kilometers, we do not have guarantee uh, that uh, it is an optimal solution. But of course, uh, it is acceptable for us and uh, we can take this solution as a solution of our problem. But we do not have a guarantee that this solution is a global optimal solution. But a very important is that this solution is obtained in acceptable time. So this is a TSP uh, in short. Uh, is a traveling salesman problem a hard problem? It depends on the size of solution space. Uh, in general, the number of potential solutions in TSP can be computed as follows. In numerator is uh, n factorial and in denominator is a 2 multiply by n. This equation, using this, equa using this equation, we can compute the number of potential solutions in TSP problem. Uh, is solution space huge for 10 cities in our example? Uh, in our example, if we have uh, 10 cities, uh, we have uh, 181,000 of potential solutions. For 20 cities, the solution space is equal to 6 multiply by 10 power of 16. For 50 cities, uh, the solution space, the size of solution space is equal to 3 uh, dot uh, zero four multiply by ten uh, to power of sixty two. And for example, for one hundred cities, we have a solution space equals to four dot sixty six multiply by ten uh, to power of one hundred fifty five. So the question is: uh, Is this solution space? a huge solution space. Uh, so we can uh, contrast this value with the value of the whole atoms in the universe. Uh, in the literature, we can find information. I don't know how uh, this information was computed. I don't know. Uh, but I have found uh, this information that uh, in the universe, the number of the all atoms is equal uh, to the 10 to the power of 80. So uh, we can see that the solution space in TSP problem, uh, for example, for uh, 100 cities is uh, very, very huge. Okay, so we know uh, what is a huge solution space. Now uh, the question is how much time is required uh, for obtaining the optimal solution using brute force algorithm. So we decided to find the, opti the global optimal solution and we can use the brute force algorithm. Of course, uh, we must assume how good uh, computer we have. So, for example, let's assume that we have a super desktop computer with uh, 16 cores uh, uh, with 3 gigahertz clock frequency per each core. So, for simplicity, uh, our example, let's assume also uh, that in one clock cycle we can compare one solution from the our solution space with the best solution which was found up to now. 
in one cycle. In one cycle, we do one comparison. So in each second, we can compare 38 giga of solutions in one second using our supercomputer. So let's see how much time uh, we must wait for an optimal solution, global, global optimal solution. For 10 cities, we must wait around for microseconds. For 20 cities, uh, we must wait uh, 352 hours. For 50 cities, we must wait to multiply by 10 to power of 44. And the question is, how old is the universe? In the literature, we can find that the universe, then the age of the universe is a 20 multiply by 10 to power of nine years. So we can see that we have uh, not enough time uh, to solve, uh, for example, uh, the problem of TSP problem uh, using brute force uh, algorithms. So the conclusion is as follows. We do not have a time for searching the global optimal solution. We are happy if we can find a good solution in acceptable computational time. In such the case, the application of evolutionary algorithms is strong recommended. So now we know where application of evolutionary algorithms is strong recommended. Okay, now I would like uh, to present the taxonomy of uh, evolutionary algorithms. Where the evolutionary algorithms are located in the family of optimization methods. Here in this figure, uh, you can see that the optimization techniques can be divided into the following area, into the following subdomain. Uh, we have the methods uh, calculus, based search, enumerative search, and a random search. In the random search method, uh, we have such methods like Taboo, Search, Monte Carlo, uh, Swarm Intelligence Algorithms, uh, and Evolutionary Algorithms. So we can see that uh, evolutionary algorithms are a part of random search method. But evolutionary algorithms are not a blind, are not a blind random search method. The searching process in evolutionary algorithm is directed by the quality of the solutions. The better solutions, the better solution have, ha, uh, has the um, uh, higher chance to be selected to the next generation. What are the main algorithms in the family of evolutionary algorithms? The evolutionary algorithms can be divided into the five domains, uh, five main domains. Uh, here are genetic algorithms, evolution strategy, genetic programming, differential evolution, and evolutionary programming. In each of these uh, domain, we have many, many algorithms which are developed up to date, up to now. Okay, so now the question is how evolutionary algorithms work. Uh, of course, uh, today we do not have time for detailed presentation of each algorithm. Uh, therefore, um, I will try to do a fast look 
uh, on only one algorithm, which is named uh, genetic algorithm. Uh, in this feature, uh, you can see the pseudocode uh, for the genetic algorithm. The pseudocode code is consists with uh, 11 steps. In the first step, uh, we must determine the objective function. In second step, uh, we must assign the number of generation to zero. In the next step, uh, we create uh, the initial population. Uh, this, this initial population is created by random. In the fourth step, we evaluate individuals in population using objective function. And in the fifth uh, step, the main loop of uh, genetic algorithm is started. Uh, we can see that while termination criteria is not satisfied, we do the following uh, steps. We increase uh, the value of t by one. Next, we select the individual to the new population from previous population. And next, we change uh, the individual in p uh, population using crossover and mutation. And in ninth step, we evaluate individual in our current population using objective function. And this main loop is uh, going uh, until the termination criteria is not satisfied. When uh, termination criteria cr criterion will be fulfilled, then we return the best individual found during the evolution. Okay, what is an objective function from the pseudocode? Uh, Due to objective function, we can evaluate our solutions. Uh, so in general, it is uh, the mathematical model of our process, uh, which is optimized uh, by uh, evolutionary algorithm. Uh, in simply TSP problem, uh, which was shown in the previous uh, slides, the objective function is equal to the length of our travel. Uh, what is a population? Uh, population is a general a set of potential solution. For example, uh, 100 potential solutions. In TSP problem, the solutions can, can be represented by the strings of integer values. So, for example, if we have five cities, the exemplary solutions, the exemplary solution, also called individual or chromosome, uh, can be represented by the following string. Two, four, three, one, five. What does it mean? Uh, this is presented one potential solution, one poten potential road uh, for TSP problem with five cities. Uh, so how it should be interpreted? Uh, how uh, we can interpret this uh, um, this string. Uh, we start our oh, travel is city number two. Next we go to the city number four. From city number four we go to the city number three. From city number three we go to the city number one. And from city number one we go to the city number five. And from city number five we return to the city number two. What are the termination criteria? Uh, determination criteria um, can be as follows. Uh, the number of iterations, the value of computational time, the algorithm convergence, or mixed criteria, for example, number of iterations equal to one or the best result not changed by 100 iterations. If one of this uh, criteria, of, of these two criteria will be fulfilled, then the algorithm is stopped. Uh, what is a selection process? Uh, the selection process 
create a new population of solutions based on the old population of solutions. Of course, the better solutions have a higher chance to be selected to the new population. One of the standard selection method is rowlet selection and how rowlet selection works. Uh, please look at this uh, figure. Uh, here we have a population which consists of uh, five uh, individual uh, from individual one <clears throat> to individual five. Uh, in the next step, we must evaluate the quality of each individual. The quality of each, of each individual uh, is computed uh, using objective function. Uh, and of course, uh, please assume that we have a maximi uh, maximization problem in this case. So uh, let's assume that in this column, uh, which is uh, named uh, by fitness, we have the value of objective function for all five individuals. So we can see that the best individual is the individual number four because it, uh, have, it has uh, the highest value of the fitness. When the fitness value is computed for the all individual, for the whole population, we must compute the global fitness. The global fitness is assumed assume of the particular, of the fitness value for particular individuals. So in this case, uh, the global fitness is equal to 200. Next, uh, we must compute the relative fitness value. <clears throat> Relative fitness value uh, is computed as follows. Uh, we uh, take the fitness value of a given individual for a given individual, and this fitness value is divided by the global fitness value. So for example, if we take uh, the value 56 and we divide this value by uh, 200, then we obtain the results 0 0.28 and this is a relative fitness. If we have a, re a relative fitness, we can scale our rowlet well. So, uh, as you can see, in the rowlet well, the uh, highest sector is for uh, this individual, which is the best in our population. Uh, in our population, the best individual uh, is individual number four, for which uh, the relative fitness is 0 0.335. Uh, and this is here the sector which is assigned to this individual. When we put this all relative fitness in the rowlet well, we have a completed rowlet well and we can do a selection process. Uh, selection process uh, is based on the randomly selection of five randomly numbers from the uh, range 0, 1. For example, uh, if we take uh, a randomly number equal to 0 0.25, this value, please see, is located in the sector which is assigned to the first individual. Therefore, to the new population, the individual number one uh, um, will be, uh, will go. If we uh, select a randomly value equal to 0 0.75, then this value, please see, is located in the sector which is assigned to the fourth individual. So to the new population, the individual number four uh, will be moved and so on. So this is a selection uh, process. 
the better individual, as you see, have a better chance to be selected to the new population. So it is uh, not a blind random, it is a directed uh, random uh, selection process. What is a crossover operation? A crossover operation uh, exchange some parts of individual of individuals between them. So please look at this figure. Uh, in figure A, we have a binary representation of our uh, solution. In figure B, we have real representation of our solution. And uh, if two individuals are selected to the crossover, we must randomly select the crossover point. The crossover point is marked by the K1 symbol. So if we select the crossover point, as you see, this part is exchanged between two individuals and these two individuals are the children individuals. Now here we have a parent, two parents, here is two children. So the crossover depends on uh, exchange uh, some parts between uh, two individuals. And the last operator, uh, which is used in uh, genetic algorithm, is a mutation operator. Mutation operator uh, exchange the particular genes in the solutions. Here in figure A, you can see the binary representation of individual uh, where number when uh, selected gen selected to the mutation uh, was uh, marked by green co uh, by uh, gray color and after mutation the number one the value of this gen was changed to zero in binary representation or in real representation number 10.43 was uh, change to number uh, 38.12. Uh, and this is a mutation uh, operator. The value of particular genes are uh, changing their values. Now the modifications of uh, evolutionary algorithms. Uh, in this uh, slide I um, would like only signalize uh, that uh, up to day, up to now, uh, the many, many uh, modifications of evolutionary algorithms was, uh, were created. Uh, in this slide, uh, you have only presented uh, the modifications of genetic algorithms. Uh, of course, uh, uh, is also many modifications of genetic programming algorithms, evolution strategy, differential evolution. Uh, these other modifications you can find in my paper, uh, which was an uh, inspiration to cre create this presentation. At the end of my uh, lecture, uh, I will give you uh, information about this paper uh, where you can find uh, detailed information about uh, other techniques and other modifications of evolutionary uh, algorithms. Uh, how popular are evolutionary algorithms? If you want answer to this question, uh, we should uh, study the number of publications in Web of Science database. Uh, if we do uh, a such uh, research, uh, we can obtain the following uh, features. Uh, here in this feature, uh, as you can see, the each bar is always uh, is always uh, lower than the previous bar. Uh, it is uh, related uh, with the fact that uh, this research was uh, done uh, during first uh, during 
uh, last month of uh, 2080, uh, uh, 18 years, uh, year. Therefore, uh, not all publications uh, from year 2018 uh, was assigned, uh, was stored in the Web of Science uh, database. But uh, please look, uh, for example, at the year uh, 2017. Uh, we can see that the most popular uh, algorithm in the Web of Science database is a genetic algorithm where we can see uh, that the number of publications is equal to around 9,000. In the second place uh, is, a, if we can see, is a um, differential evolution algorithm where in 2017 year uh, the number of uh, publication if Web of Science database was equal to 1,600 uh, 1, publications. And in the third place is uh, a um, GP algorithm uh, with publication uh, around 450 in 2017 uh, year. Uh, this is a free place. G, uh, genetic algorithm, differential evolution, and uh, genetic programming based on the publication in uh, Web of Science uh, database. Patents with the use of uh, evolutionary algorithms. As uh, you can see, uh, many practical applications uh, of evolutionary methods uh, have been patented by such corporation, uh, corporations like, for example, Caterpillar, uh, Yamaha Motor Company, Fujitsu Limited, International Business Machines Corporation, LSI Logic Corporation, Honda Research Institute Europe, Prometheus Laboratories, and Siemens. Uh, therefore, uh, these uh, methods is uh, used in practice, and moreover, uh, the patents are uh, are created um, based on the methods uh, in which uh, evolutionary algorithms are used. Uh, number, uh, which is the number of uh, patents uh, in Google database in Google Patents database. Uh, we can see the following uh, numbers. Uh, for example, for the year uh, 2017, uh, we have around 6,000 of patents uh, for genetic algorithm. Uh, we have 400 of patents for differential evolution, and we have around 350 uh, patents for uh, genetic programming. If we sum up these all numbers, uh, we can see that the number of patents in the year 2000-2018 for particular methods is as follows. The first place is F for genetic algorithm with uh, over uh, 43 thousand of uh, patents. The second place is for genetic programming and the third place is for differential evolution. So uh, you can see that uh, the evolutionary methods are very often used in the, in the other methods which were patented by the uh, international uh, company. Uh, which are the most popular areas of evolutionary algorithm applications in the Web of Science database. Uh, here in this table, uh, we have uh, some area of applications, but uh, if we can see, uh, uh, there are seven main, uh, main area 
of applications of evolutionary algorithm, seven ma main area. Uh, the first area is engineering, electrical, electronic. Here we have uh, the uh, um, much, uh, the, the, the best number uh, of uh, the publications for this uh, research area. In the second place, we have computer science, artificial intelligence. In the third place, in the computer science theory methods. Next, we have computer science interdisciplinary applications. Next, we have automation control systems. Uh, next, uh, we have computer science information systems. And uh, uh, seventh uh, um, area is operations research management uh, science. This is, uh, in my opinion, uh, seven um, main uh, area which are the most popular uh, in using the evolutionary uh, algorithms. Uh, this research uh, was uh, is based on the data uh, which is stored in the Web of Science uh, um, database. Okay, uh, now uh, one of the um, most important question, uh, which evolutionary algorithm should be, should be used for a given problem? Uh, so, uh, the question is easy, uh, but the answer uh, to this question is hard. Because uh, we cannot answer that for this problem, the GA will be probably the best method or that for this problem, the genetic programming will be the best. No, uh, the answer is as follows. Uh, expanding the answer to the all heuristic methods in general, not just evolutionary algorithm, the best answers, answer seems to be, first, take the method you know best. Second, Take this method where you can define your problem well in terms required by this method. Third, take the method where you can understand the sensitivity of this method to parameters values. And the last, take the method where you can fine tune this method. So if we want to use the evolutionary algorithm, one of the uh, algorithms from the family of evolutionary algorithms, we should uh, answer uh, uh, to this four uh, to this four sentence. So we must take method uh, which uh, we know best, uh, for we, uh, for which we can define our problem well. Uh, uh, which, uh, for which we understand the sensitivity and for which uh, uh, we can uh, fine-tune uh, this method. Okay, now the problems in evolutionary algorithms. Uh, here are two main problems in evolutionary algorithms. First is a premature convergence. Uh, the population converging to a suboptimal solution instead of an optimal one. It is a premature convergence problem. Uh, we can solve this problem by introducing the mechanism uh, which will provide a lower transfer rate of the genetic material between individuals. So the whole population is divided into several subpopulations, uh, so-called islands and periodically migrate an individual between Islands. And the second problem, the second problem is an optimal trade-off between exploration and exploitation properties of evolutionary algorithms. One of the solutions to this problem is control of the level of selection pressure. We can do this by introducing specialized genetic operators, which will guarantee high population diversity at the start of the algorithm operation. 
So uh, we have high exploration property and small exploitation property and a low, low population diversity at the end of the algorithm operation. So we have low exploration property and high exploitation property. Uh, exploration is a global searching uh, of uh, solution space. Exploitation is a local searching of uh, solution space. So at the start of the algorithm, we would like to have a maximal uh, exploration property, but at the end of the algorithm, we should have the maximal value of exploitation property and define the optimal trade-off between exploration and exploitation property is uh, one of these two main problems in evolutionary um, algorithms. Okay, now uh, future trends uh, in evolutionary algorithms. First is a hybridization of two or more algorithms to obtain better results. Uh, currently, in the literature, we can find an increasing number of papers where hybrid algorithms are presented. Therefore, in my opinion, uh, the future trends, uh, the one of the future trends, will concentrate on the hybridization of two or two uh, of two or more algorithms to obtain better results. Uh, Second, future trends, memetic algorithms. Uh, the term memetic algorithm is uh, widely used as a synergy of the evolutionary algorithm or any other population-based approach with separate local search technique as the Nerder meet method, for example. It is a next future uh, trend, memetic algorithms. Next is a parallel implementation of evolutionary algorithm, especially, especially such implementation which is easy to run in GPU, uh, in graphical processing uh, unit. Uh, as we know, a greater effort in this future should be in future proposal because this could be a crucial crucial feature to decide whether an algorithm is useful in real applications because where the optimization process usually is very complex uh, because the uh, optimization process usually is very complex and takes a lot of computational time in real applications so we must have a very efficient uh, and very fast uh, evolutionary uh, algorithm. Therefore, the parallel implementation of evolutionary algorithms, which uh, are easy uh, to run in GPU, is a next uh, future trend. Uh, next uh, future trends is a, next future trend is a surrogate models. In general, computationally cheaper models of real-world problems, which can be used in the place of full fitness evaluations. This is a definition of surrogate models. We create a computationally cheaper models of real-world problems, which can be used in the place of full fitness evaluation, especially where the objective function is very complex and, in, uh, and, in and uh, especially when the computational time of uh, objective function is uh, very time consuming. So uh, we create the compu computationally cheaper models of real world problems, which can be used in the place of full fitness evaluation and that refine those models through occasional full evaluation of the individuals. Next. Is a future trend is automated tuning and adaptive parameter control. As we know, each engineering problem is defined by the different objective function and has a different landscape of search space. 
the values of evolutionary algorithms parameters which are good in one problem cannot be uh, sufficient in other problems. Therefore, automated tuning and adaptive parameter control is also a, a very hot uh, future trend. Next, future trend, the proper definition of an objective function. Uh, as we know, the industrial problems are very complex. Therefore, the definition of a good mathematical model, good objective function for evolutionary algorithms, for a given industry process is also a very demanding task. The quality of the chosen objective function will, will have a great influence on the results obtained using uh, evolutionary algorithm methods. Next future trend is a <clears throat> repeatability of evolutionary algorithms methods. Uh, as we know, the evolutionary algorithms are stochastic techniques. Each time the IA method uh, is run, a different result can be obtained. Therefore, the main focus should be on ensuring repeatability of the results generated by evolutionary algorithm techniques. And of course, this issue is very important for application on evolutionary algorithm methods in industry. And now in short uh, only, other future trends uh, is connected, other research topics uh, is connected with constraints handling, dynamic uh, optimization, optimization in noisy and non-stationary environments, multi-objective optimization problems, uh, especially, especially with a large number of uh, decision uh, variables. Summary. Uh, in summary, I and or we as uh, researchers in uh, evolutionary algorithm domain, uh, we believe that in the future, new evolutionary algorithms will be developed and uh, the research problems connected with evolutionary algorithms uh, will always be a hot topic for uh, uh, researchers. More information uh, about this lecture you can find in the following paper because uh, this paper was an uh, inspiration for me uh, to create it uh, this uh, presentation, to create uh, this lecture. Uh, this paper uh, is written by me, Adam Slovik and uh, Halina Kwaśnicka. Uh, the title of this paper is uh, Evolutionary Algorithms and Their Applications to Engineering Problems. In this, in this paper, you can find much more information about state of the art uh, in evolutionary algorithms and their application to engineering problems. Uh, as you see, uh, this is a very fresh paper uh, because uh, this paper is published online, was published online in 16 March 2012 in the journal uh, Neural Computing and Applications. Uh, I would like to add that uh, this paper is in uh, open access. Uh, therefore, uh, everyone who wants to read this paper uh, can do it without any additional uh, payment. So uh, thank you very much for uh, attention. Uh, and uh, that's all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Adam, uh, for, for your interesting lecture. Uh, we really benefit from it, and uh, you have got many questions uh, in this lecture. Okay. So let me summarize some of them. Yes, please. Okay. Um, 
one question. They are asking about the mimetic algorithms are established and will know. So if it, is it possible to give us some novel direction for developing mimic algorithms? Hmm. Uh, memetic algorithms, uh, new directions. Uh, in memetic algorithms, uh, as uh, I um, tell, uh, the memetic algorithm is a connection between uh, nature-inspired uh, optimization techniques and uh, other uh, local search techniques. So, in my opinion, uh, the research uh, which should be done in this field uh, will be related uh, with a hybridization of uh, new uh, local, uh, new local uh, optimization techniques with a new uh, um, with a new evolutionary techniques. Uh, because, uh, as you know, uh, for example. Uh, uh, we have uh, not not only uh, evolutionary algorithms, we have also a swarm intelligence algorithms. Uh, the swarm intelligence algorithms are also a very interesting area and uh, up to date there are many, many, uh, many, many um, different uh, algorithms. So, uh, in my opinion, the main uh, research uh, will be connected uh, with the hybridization of the newly developed uh, bio-inspired techniques with uh, local, with other local search techniques. So I, I hope that uh, <laughs> it will be sufficient. My it's answer. Clear, it's clear. It's clear enough. So uh, about talking about the hybridization. There is another question uh, asking about what are the criteria uh, and how can we choose the algorithms that can be hybridized? Oh, it is uh, not easy to answer to this question. Uh, mm, if we want to hybridize uh, two or more uh, algorithms, uh, first of all, uh, we should very well known each of the algorithm which we want to hybridize. We uh, must very uh, well know the advantages of this algorithm and the disadvantages of this algorithm. And then we should try to do a hybridization methods to eliminate the disadvantages of the particular methods. For example, uh, uh, as you know, uh, we have uh, neurophasic systems. Uh, so in neural, neural networks uh, are the techniques uh, which uh, can be learned uh, fuzzy, but uh, in neural networks, the knowledge uh, is represented by numbers. So it is not easy to see uh, what rules are represented by uh, neural networks. But in fuzzy systems, we have uh, uh, very well written rules, but we cannot learn fuzzy systems. So uh, the hybridization of uh, neural networks and fuzzy systems was elaborated, and we have the uh, pretty uh, rules uh, which uh, can be learned uh, as a neural uh, network. We have a neuro neurophasy systems. So in, uh, in answer to this question, uh, first of all, we must very well know the methods uh, which we want to hybridize and we must know the advantages and all disadvantages of this method and then we can try to hybridize this method. This means that there is no specific rule that uh, saying that the hybridization, hybridization is a good idea or a bad idea. It is depend on the algorithms and its, and its advantage and disadvantage. 
Yes, yes, of course. It is no, uh, no. Uh, there is no any specific rules. Uh, we must fill. We must fill these algorithms, and we must know this, uh, the algorithm disadvantages and advantages, and we can try to uh, uh, to marry these two algorithms. Okay, uh, another question. Do you have time? We have many, many questions. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, someone is asking what is the popular method to specify a parameters and how the fitness value is computed. I think you answered the fitness value, how it is computed in your lecture, but uh, uh, she is asking about how uh, or, or what is the popular method to specify the parameters. Uh, to uh -huh, methods for uh, specified parameters. Okay. Uh, hmm. It is also the question is uh, easy, but the answer is not uh, not easy. Uh, as we know, uh, we have uh, very very um, we have many different evolutionary algorithms. We have many genetic algorithms. Uh, differential evolution variants, uh, genetic programming variants, swarm intelligence. We can add uh, each of the algorithm have its own uh, specific parameters. And for each algorithm is a some heuristic uh, how this parameter should be tuned. Uh, I um, can concentrate on a genetic algorithm. Uh, in genetic algorithm, uh, it is uh, first uh, we have uh, two uh, three parameters. Uh, first parameter is a population size. Second parameter is a, a probability of crossover, and the third parameter is a probability of mutation. Uh, the uh, population size, in my uh, experience, uh, should be on the level on one hundred, but of course. If we have a very time-consuming, uh, very time-consuming complex uh, and very time-consuming and complex objective function, uh, we can also use uh, um, evolutionary algorithms which uh, are uh, named as micro micro evolutionary algorithms. Uh, then uh, are a micro GA, uh, micro DE, and so on, where the population uh, size is very small. So also it is, all, uh, as you can see, the population size is also dependent on the uh, computational cost. Uh, now, uh, the probability of crossover, uh, from my uh, point of view, uh, should be between 0 0.5 or 0 0.8. And the heuristic for the probability of mutation uh, which are used very often, which is used very often by me, is uh, the one divided by number of decision variables. So, for example, if we have an uh, optimization problem, when we have uh, one uh, 100 uh, decision variables, then for this problem, uh, we should try to start with the uh, probability of mutation equal to 1 divided by 100. Uh, but of course, this is a start value of uh, parameter and uh, this parameter should be tuned, tuned by us during uh, some uh, run of our algorithms. Okay, thank you, uh, Prof. Adam. Uh, there is another question. Uh, in your presentation, in slide number 16, in the selection process, uh, okay. someone is asking uh, what is the global fitness represent? He, uh, his opinion uh, that the term global fitness is misleading and uh, he is suggesting to use uh, the sum of all fitness values. Uh, okay, I have uh, the 16 presentation and I see global fitness. Uh, can you repeat uh, this question once again? Uh, 
he is he is saying what is the global fitness represent uh, this term is somehow misleading for him he suggests okay. that okay. he suggested to to be represented as the sum of all fitness values okay uh, uh, maybe i will uh, share my presentation uh, or not what you prefer uh, okay uh, and i will uh, Okay, and this is this is the selection. Okay, uh, here we can see the global fitness and how this global global fitness is uh, computed. Uh, the global fitness uh, is a sum uh, of, if I could understand the question, uh, uh, if not, please correct uh, correct me. Uh, first of all, uh, we, sh we compute the fitness for the particular individual. So if we have the objective function, we uh, put the given individual to the objective function and the given objective function uh, gives to us answer how good the uh, individual is. So for example, the individual one is good on 56, individual two is good on 12, individual 3 is good on 43, individual 5, individual 4 is good to uh, 67, 67 and, and so on. And the global fitness is a sum of this all fitness, if I could understand the question. Yes, he is saying that the term global fitness, it is the sum of all the fitness. I think you, you answered it, but the global fitness is equivalent to the sum of all the fitness uh, values. Yes, a global fitness is the same, is the same, uh, is a sum of uh, fitness for all uh, individual in populations. It is a global fitness. Thank you. Uh, there is another question in your slide, uh, in slide 21. Okay. Uh, they are asking what tool are you used for creating these graphs? Uh, these graphs uh, was used, uh, the data are from the Web of Science uh, database, as I uh, said during presentation. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, I do not understand now the query which I give. Uh, probably it was uh, genetic algorithm applications or uh, maybe uh, some genetic algorithms in Web of Science. And uh, from technical po point of view, uh, it was created in Excel. An Excel sheet using the data set from Web of Science? Yes. Uh, another question, um, in the TSP problem, the traveling salesman problem, uh, yes. someone is, ask, is asking, uh, is the total number, is the factorial n, is n factorial? Uh, okay, I go to this. Mm. Oh, yeah, here, mm. n factorial. And what is uh, the question? Uh, uh, he is asking is what is the total is the total number is in factorial yes it is factorial it is factorial factorial is the total number of solutions uh, um, I don't understand uh, the, uh, the question uh, you, you can summarize the, the equation. It is used for what or, or, or n factorial is what and the two times n is what. The, and it's misleading for him is uh, what is n factorial here in the, uh, in the upside of the equation. Maybe you can write this in chat, uh, this question, because uh, it will be easy to, to understand uh, to me if it's it, okay, it, okay. It is he, he, he is just saying what is that uh, the total number is n factorial and the question mark? Uh, no, no n factorial. Uh, this factorial is depends on the uh, number of uh, city. Yeah? Okay. So, so it is not uh, n factorial. Uh, if we have 10 city, then we have 10 factorial multiplied by two uh, 
uh, divided, sorry. Uh, it is a 10 factorial multi, uh, divided by uh, 20, yeah, for 10 cities. Okay. Okay. So n, uh, n, uh, it is, uh, n, it is number of cities. Okay. Uh, another question, uh, Dr. Adam, we are so sorry, but your field is so interesting and many people have different questions. Okay, no problem. I have time. Uh, there is a question. Uh, what is the efficiency of both uh, PGA and BGA? Uh, efficient of PG and DE? P, G, A, and B, G, A. I can uh, uh, send the, it is in the question and answers. I will uh, send it to you. I cannot see what, what is, uh, okay, I see. Uh, I send it to you. Mm -hmm, okay. Uh, what is the efficiency of both P, G, A, and B, G, A? Uh, BGA, I understand that it is a binary genetic algorithm, in my opinion, by PGA, I don't know uh, uh, what, I don't know uh, what that doesn't mean. Uh, maybe it is uh, some version of genetic algorithms, uh, but I don't know what, uh, what I should answer because uh, I it's do not, under, not understand yeah, okay. The, the, the okay. short, what is a PGA. Um, another question for me, uh, uh, how can you deal with the multi-objective problems in the EA algorithms or the evaluation algorithms? Oh, uh, in uh, multi-objective uh, optimization problems, uh, um, which we have to use evolutionary methods, uh, generally we have uh, two trends. Uh, first is a linear combination uh, of the weighted uh, criteria. So if we have uh, two objective function, then we try to do a linear combination of these two objective function value. And uh, the second uh, general trend is so-called so -called the Pareto dominance. Uh, in the first trend, in the linear combination of weighted criteria, uh, all objective functions are combined into one scalar value. And the advantages, of course, of this approach is its uh, simplicity. And the disadvantage of this uh, approach uh, is uh, that it can be particularly sensitive uh, to the settings of uh, the weights. But okay. uh, in the Pareto dominance approach, uh, we do not have this limitation. So we have to approach a uh, linear combination of weighted criteria or Pareto uh, dominance. In my opinion, uh, Pareto dominance is, uh, is better. Is the better. Okay. Uh, in slide number five, Dr. Adam, okay. uh, someone is asking what is the relation between engineering and TSP? Okay. I understand. Uh, okay, this is five. What is relation? Uh, the TSP model is very often used in many engineering uh, problems. Uh, how uh, it is related? Of course, uh, please uh, let's uh, assume uh, that uh, we have uh, for example, um, the logistic, uh, logistic company, when we should uh, take uh, uh, deliver, when we should deliver some packages. And uh, we have our depot in this, uh, in this uh, point, and the other nine points are our clients, where we should deliver the package for each client. So it is the simplest, uh, so it is the uh, uh, simply uh, explanation how it uh, could be uh, connected with the engineering. And uh, to the person who asked uh, this question, uh, I would like you uh, to 
to um, to read some about vehicle routing problems uh, because there are many 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 problems uh, uh, with a package deliver with, there are vehicle routing problem with time windows so each uh, point uh, can be uh, uh, can be visible in a given uh, in a given time window for example uh, one client uh, one client wish uh, is available to us between uh, uh, 12 and uh, uh, first uh, o'clock for example or between 2 uh, or 3 p.m. o'clock. Uh, so we have a vehicle routing problem with time window. We have vehicle routing problem with ca capacity vehicle routing problem uh, because we have uh, cars uh, which uh, possesses a limited capacity and we do not take all packages in one car, for example and so on and so on. Uh, for example, the length of road uh, can be time dependent because uh, in the uh, 8 uh, IM o'clock, uh, the travel between point A and B take 10 minutes. By, for example, in uh, 15 o'clock, we have a traffic jam and the same road take for us 30 minutes. So we have also dynamic uh, graph. Uh, so it is very, very deep, uh, uh, very deep there, area. There is a big relation in the engineering field in the TSP. Uh, yeah. Problem. Okay, uh, Professor Adam, uh, there is another question. Uh, someone you need to know the difference between the convergence to optimal or suboptimal solution using EAs and deep learning process. Hmm. Uh, what is a difference between convergence to suboptimal uh, or global optimal? I could understand. Uh, optimal or suboptimal solution using EA or deep learning process. In brief, I know this is a huge question uh, with so many details, so you can improve. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Answering it. okay. In in deep learning uh, process, I cannot ask uh, uh, now. Uh, I will concentrate only on uh, evolutionary algorithms, which is a difference between convergence uh, to the sub suboptimal and optimal. Uh, um, the Maybe, uh, as uh, you know, uh, the evolutionary algorithms can be applied to this problem where we can not have any other exact algorithms. Therefore, uh, as it was shown in this slide, oh, we have uh, one solution, we have another solution, we have another solution, and we have another solution. This solution seems to be good, but we cannot identify uh, it is, uh, whether it is a global optimal solution. So uh, uh, from my opinion, we will never have information uh, if we are on the suboptimal uh, uh, solution or if we are in global optimal solution because we do not have any information what is the value of optimal solution because uh, we search this value so we can only prevent uh, uh, prevent uh, uh, the algorithm uh, and we can for example uh, add a specific genetic operator uh, in, uh, in this manner. So it is only a, a short uh, answer from me. Okay, thank you, Professor Adam. Uh, someone is uh, need your evaluation or you can evaluate the hybrid algorithm, uh, the genetic algorithm with the swarm intelligence. Can you evaluate this hybridization? 
uh, in my uh, research, uh, I must uh, think, uh, uh, no, no, I have uh, not uh, done yet hybridization of swarm algorithms with uh, genetic algorithm. Uh, I have only work uh, on the uh, on the um, alone um, swarm uh, intelligence algorithm with which uh, without uh, hybridization. Which, uh, yes, without uh, hybridization. Okay, uh, the question that uh, was asking about the the PGA and BGA, she clarified that the PGA she is talking about the breeder genetic algorithm, and the ah. PGA is the parallel genetic algorithm. Oh, I have not used uh, both of them. Okay. Uh, there is uh, a question for me. How can uh, you deal with the constraints in problem which are being solved using the EA? Mm, uh, in general, mm, if you want to handle a constraints, uh, we can use in the evolutionary algorithm so-called uh, penalty method. It is uh, probably one of the standard uh, solution for this problem. Uh, penalty method uh, is uh, based on addition uh, non non-zero penalty factor uh, into the to the objective function value, uh, and uh, the value of uh, penalty factor should be of course higher when the given solution uh, violates constraints more and should be smaller when the given solution violates the constraint uh, a little. So it is uh, the most popular solution for the uh, constraint uh, handling in evolutionary algorithms. Okay. Uh, do you have a machine learning lab, Dr. Adam? Machine learning? Uh, repeat, please. What, what machine learning? Lab, lab, a lab for a machine learning experiments. Uh, no. Uh, I, someone, someone is want to cooperate with you in your uh, research points in EA, and she is asking, uh, do you have a machine learning? How can we contact with us, with you? And uh, asking that, can you send? Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Yes. I am, uh, as I say to anyone from from the world, uh, I am open to any collaboration uh, from everyone. Uh, here in this uh, slide. Uh, you can see my two uh, official address, email addresses, adam.slovic uh, at tu.koshalin.pl or uh, aslovic uh, at ee.tu.koshalin.pl. Uh, so uh, you can write uh, the message on this uh, both uh, uh, on these both uh, addresses. I uh, I can also um, add one more uh, one more. Uh, wait a, a moment. Uh, wait a moment. Uh, I will share the uh, the the whiteboard. It is uh, um, also the email address uh, um, from Gmail. Um, so if someone wants to collaborate uh, with me on some topics uh, connected with uh, artificial intelligence, evolutionary algorithms, swarm intelligence, neural networks, and so on, then please uh, contact uh, with me. Okay. Any person is welcome. You will have so many emails in the, <laughs> after this lecture. There is uh, so many questions that I can't handle, and I know that you're uh, tired from your presentation. But they are asking, can you share for them this presentation? Yes, you can share, of course, your okay. presentation. Okay. Uh, do you have any uh, other information you want to add? Uh, no, only uh, please uh, look uh, if uh, someone wants have more information about uh, uh, this presentation. Uh, I will uh, repeat uh, what I say at the end of my uh, presentation. 
that the some other interesting uh, information which I uh, do not have a time to to speak uh, during our meeting uh, can be found in this uh, uh, paper, Evolutionary Algorithms and Their Application to Engineering Problems. It is a very hot paper from this year, uh, which is published in Neural Computing and Applications. And of course, uh, if uh, someone wants to contact uh, with me, then uh, please uh, do it. Uh, I, I am uh, friendly for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, no, it's shown, Dr. Adam, you are so patient for our uh, questions and you covered all the questions with, uh, with, uh, with no tire in there. Okay, thanks. It was thanks, pleasure. Thanks a lot, me. and you are so welcome. Welcome. Okay, so thank you very much for all. Once again, thank you, Dr. Sally, for uh, uh, be a moderator of thanks, uh, this Alan. session. And once again, thanks for all audience, and thank you very much for all questions. Thank you. And goodbye, and see you again in the other events. Thanks a lot, Dr. Adam. Thanks a lot. باي 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 شكرا يا جماعة الحضور وإحنا حاولنا نغطي الأسئلة إحنا الأسئلة كتيرة جدا بتيجي على الـ Q&A أو بتيجي على الشات أو بتجيلي لوحدها ففعلا حاولنا نغطي أكبر قدر من الأسئلة إن فعلا topic مهمة جدا و research أريا يعني كتير يقدر يستغلوها في في أبحاثهم بس للأسف إحنا ملتزمين بوقت بس هو يعني هي so friendly وما عندوش مشكلة خالص أي حد عنده أي سؤال يبعث له و... و... وأتمنى تكون الناس استفادت من السيشن دي من لها فعلا من أقوى السيشنز اللي موجودة وشكرا يا جماعة ليكو معاك يا دكتور عزة الشاي